Today's episode of Chicago Bears Now is presented by Roan. The men's closet needed a radical reinvention, and Roan stepped up with the commuter collection. Rocking the commuter shirt right now. It's breathable, flexible, feels great. You guys can get 20% off by using code CHATSPORTS when you go to roan.com slash chatsports. Go check it out. It's Roan, the best men's dress shirts and products out there. All right, let's get to today's Bears Rumors Roundup. I am Harrison Graham. David Montgomery, is he going to re receive the franchise tag from the Bears? Uh, one smoking J. I think it's a long shot. I don't really think uh, he's a strong franchise tag candidate for a couple of reasons. One, positional value. And two, I just think you could re-sign him at a cheaper price than what the tag actually costs. Uh, the NFL franchise tag window does open today, Tuesday, February 21st. Teams have until March 7th uh, to place the tag uh, under a player. Uh, and if not, in Montgomery and all these players' cases uh, that are eligible, uh, they would enter free agency if they are not re-signed uh, by their uh, uh, respective teams. Uh, here are some dates to know. Today the window opens, like I said, March 7th is when it closes. And then for any player who does get franchise tagged, uh, that player and team have until July 15th to negotiate a long-term extension. And if that is not meached, er, reached, if a contract does not take place, then they will play 2023 under the franchise tag. Now, I like David Montgomery a lot. Just because I'm saying I don't think it's likely he gets tagged and uh, that I wouldn't tag him doesn't mean I wouldn't bring him back. I mean, he, this is a guy that has almost 5,000 all-purpose yards in four seasons. He's been a leader for this team. He's a hard runner. I think uh, that if the Bears add to this offensive line and with another year of Justin Fields and his dual threat ability, Montgomery could have a really big season in 2023. I think he could be a key piece to this offense. But when you look at the running back franchise tag numbers for 2023, the normal tag is, you know, just over $10 million. Even the transition tag, which allows players to negotiate with other teams and then you can match it if you choose to, still $8.4 million. Like, is Montgomery going to get that on the open market? Maybe he does. Uh, and I would kind of say, okay, if you get eight and a half or more, uh, you know, thank you for your services. We're going to draft someone in the fourth round, or we'll sign a cheaper back to pair with Khalil Herbert. I mean, Khalil Herbert gives you that flexibility uh, to, you know, be a little bit choosy in terms of how much you want to spend on David Montgomery. So I do not expect him to get tagged. Uh, I do think the Bears will either re-sign him before free agency or or let him test the market and then ultimately either re-sign him or let him go, depending on what his market is. Um, and his market could be dictated uh, on based on a few things. Does Saquon Barkley get tagged? Sounds like he may not. He could be a free agent. Does Josh Jacobs get tagged by Vegas? Uh, what do the Eagles uh, do with Miles Sanders? They probably let him go, but uh, don't think Montgomery will get tagged, and uh, I still think there's a chance, good chance he returns, but uh, it is certainly not a given. Now, would you franchise tag David Montgomery considering the numbers I just showed you. If you would, type F for you would franchise tag him. Or if you'd rather let him test the market, see what he's worth, type T for test the market. I would let him test the market and then make a decision, you know, if he comes back to you and says, hey, Team X or Y is offering me $7 million per year. Do you want to match that? Uh, if not, you let him go. All right, let's get to some more free agency buzz here. Could the Bears sign Mike McGlinchey? I'll go two smoking Jays. People are talking. I definitely think this is a decent possibility. Mike McGlinchey, of course, uh, the free agent to be right tackle for the San Francisco 49ers. I do not believe San Francisco will uh, pay to bring him back because he's going to uh, – count 10 to 15 million bucks. We'll talk about this and the origin of this story in just a minute. But first, I want to shout out our sponsor, Roan. Uh, I mentioned off the top, uh, the mail closet really needed a radical reinvention because I've been wearing dress shirts, dress pants for years. And a lot of time, you know, they're kind of stiff. They're not very comfortable. But Roan has made their commuter collection with very comfortable dress fit shirts, uh, like the one I'm wearing today. They stepped up to the challenge of reinventing a male's closet, most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products known to man. And here's why. Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan commuter collection. Mobility is everything, right? Uh, their four-way stretch fabric provides breathability, the flexibility that you need when you're, you know, 
at work doing shows like I am or when I go out to the golf course can throw on one of their polos as well with Roan. Uh, it keeps you very comfortable at all times. Look, looking good is easy. There's plenty of companies out there that put out good looking dress shirts. But how often do you look good and feel good? Like I said, I've had plenty of other uh, products in the past where I'm like, yeah, this shirt looks great, but I'm not comfortable in it. I sweat easily in it. Well, with uh, Roan, they've got the odor-free technology. Their Gold Fusion anti-odor technology is going to keep you smelling fresh and clean all day long. And on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable. So you can ditch the dry cleaner altogether, throw this shirt in the washer uh, when you want to clean it, and then air dry it, and you are good to go. Go to Roan.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports to get 20% off your order. Go check out their different shirts, quarter zips, other products as well. You're not going to regret it. That link and promo code in the description and comments of today's video. Back to Mike McGlinchey. ESPN predicted the Bears will sign McGlinchey, one of the top free agent right tackles on the open market. There are uh, a few uh, guys out there that we will explore in a second. Uh, I do think the Bears will have interest here. Uh, he's a very good run blocker, which we know in Luke Getze's uh, scheme, they want to run the football. It's a similar system to what he's uh, used to in that Shanahan offense, kind of the same coaching tree there. So uh, McGlinchey would step in, be comfortable. The Bears obviously have cap space to pay more than what San Francisco could uh, to bring him back. Now, there are other options. Caleb McGarry with the Falcons, who is a franchise tag candidate. He could get tagged by Atlanta. Jawan Taylor is kind of the opposite. He's really good in pass protection, but not very good as a run blocker. McGlinch is a great run blocker and, you know, average as a pass blocker. I think he can improve there, but he's still good enough. Andrew Wiley, Jer Jermaine Illuminor, kind of some lower tier options uh, if you don't want to pay top dollar like McGarry and McGlinchey are going to cost, maybe even Juwan Taylor. I would prefer McGarry or McGlinchey. I think they're the most accomplished. They're the most, uh, this past season, they were the best two in terms of who's available in free agency. Uh, I would like to land one of these guys, even though they're not perfect uh, products. I do think they would plug in and play very, very well here. You look at them uh, as players based on PFF's grades, they're pretty similar in the sense that they're better run blockers than pass blockers. Caleb McGarry, though, was really good this past year. And, you know, remember his pass blocking grade, Atlanta didn't throw the ball a ton, so it's kind of hard to measure that uh, and really figure out, you know, is he an average pass blocker? Can he improve there? Certainly room for improvement always. Uh, they both gave up six sacks. Uh, McGlinchey definitely more uh, penalty prone, uh, grabs a little bit from time to time, but uh, I would still certainly take him. I mean, you look at this offensive line, if you're going to commit to Braxton Jones as a young player, I personally, which I would keep Braxton Jones as a starter. I've said that, whether it's at left tackle or right tackle. I would like to add a veteran right tackle. I would almost say it's a must. I, I think you have to get someone in here who's done the job, who's a good player, who's done it for years, uh, and McGarry and McGlinchey fit that bill. I mean, they can plug in and play. Now it's going to cost. I mean, McGlinchey might get $15 million per year, and is that an overpay? It might be, but you know what? That's, that's what it takes in free agency, uh, and I would certainly be willing to do it for the right player. Now, fill in the blank for us. The Bears starting right tackle in 2023 will be blank. Who's that player going to be? Is it going to be Mike McGlinchey? Is it going to be Caleb McGarry? Is it going to be someone already on the Bears roster? Hopefully not. they got to get better there. Maybe it's someone in the draft. Let me know who that player is who is going to be the Bears' right tackle. Let's go to the defensive side of the ball. How about signing Draymond Jones or Javon Hargrave in free agency? I'm going to elevate this to three smoking Jays. I think there's a pretty good chance this happens because it looks like there's a chance that both these guys could hit the open market. Draymond Jones might be a little too pricey on his tag number for Denver to franchise tag him, so he could be out there. ESPN also linked the Bears to him as well, uh, and he could fill that much-needed three-tech defensive tackle spot. He also is uh, versatile enough where he can play edge some, so maybe on some uh, you know rundowns he plays on the edge and uh, you bring in a beefier defensive tackle next year, one tech, uh, to uh, stop the run there. Uh, Bill Barnwell of ESPN uh, had this to say. He said, with edge, interior flexibility, Jones is a high-end mover who shows a quick first step off the ball and short area juice to penetrate versus the run game or create pass rush production. In 2022, he registered six and a half sacks and 28 pressures. Uh, and if you look at his numbers throughout his career, uh, rookie year in 2019, three and a half sacks, and you know last three years, six and a half, five and a half, six and a half, the tackles have gone up, the run stop production has improved as well. Uh, what I like about Draymond Jones 
is he's young and he's ascending. This is not a player who is flatlined, and I think that'll intrigue Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus. They want guys who are trending upwards, guys who are improving. When you overpay in free agency, you want to do it for a guy who's moving like this. Not a guy who's like, eh, we might have seen his best football. I don't think we've seen Draymond Jones' best football, and that's why he's a player I would be intrigued with in Chicago. Now we'll talk about Javon Hargrave and why he might be a possibility here in just a moment. But if you love the Bears, I think we're the channel for you. There's a lot of awesome Bears YouTube channels out there, and I encourage you to check them out. But give us a chance as well. Hit the subscribe button, and hey, set an alarm for a week from now. And if you're not a fan of what you've seen, hey, you can unsubscribe. It's 100% free. No risk for uh, potentially high reward. Uh, some entertaining content for you guys. End of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Provide you some entertainment 10 to 15 minutes a day. So hit that sub button. Join the movement. Help us grow here on the channel. Okay, uh, so this is kind of a two-parter because uh, you're saying this is not Javon Hargrave. Well, it directly impacts him. So report yesterday from uh, Adam Kaplan, uh, Dolph Kleiman tweeted this out. Uh, Eagle safety C.J. Gardner-Johnson will receive the franchise tag uh, if, a if the team uh, can't reach a long-term deal with him, according to Kaplan, uh, and, uh, you know, threw some stats in there. Gardner Johnson had a great year, which, by the way, if he had free agency, eh, maybe I'm interested there, but not really a, as big of a position of need. But the reason this impacts Hargrave is if Philadelphia tags Gardner Johnson and they don't re-sign Hargrave between now and the start of free agency in mid-March, that means he hits the open market almost certainly. So if Philadelphia is prioritizing Gardner Johnson on the tag, then looks like they're going to let Hargrave hit the open market, which means if you're the Bears – Gear up, baby, because Javon Hargrave had an awesome year for Philadelphia. I mean, well, probably the best year of his career. Now, he is going to be 30 this year, but still, 60 tackles, 11 sacks, 10 TFL, 16 quarterback hits, one forced fumble. I mean, he was a game breaker for a breaker for a historic Eagles defensive line this year. And, again, when you talk about this front four, it just has to get better at every position, man. You get Hargrave or Jones – both maybe seems like a long shot but you get one of these guys in here uh that really changes the complexion of your defensive line you pair an edge rusher with it and then add someone in the draft you can go from the worst defensive line to top half of the league overnight just like that and here's my take if both these guys Draymond Jones and Javon Hargrave hit the open market there's no excuse for the Bears to not sign one of them Throw big money and get it done. You've got to get a game record on this defensive line. And how many times has Matt Eberflus talked about that three-tech defensive tackle spot? It's the engine of the defense. the engine to the defense. Well, get it done then. I mean, you tried to sign Ogunjobi last year, and I get he failed the physical, and, you know, things fell apart. But if these two guys, these game wreckers hit the open market, you got to find a way. I mean, you've just got to be willing to pay big dollar uh, to get one of these guys to Chicago. So pick one. Who would you rather sign for this defensive line at that defensive tackle spot. Type JH for Javon Hargrave, uh, type DJ for Draymond Jones. I'd probably lean Hargrave even though he's a bit older. I think he's his ceiling's higher. He's a better, more proven player for a longer amount of time. But I really like Jones as well. JH for Hargrave or DJ for Jones. Real quick, uh, a bit of news here that dropped a couple hours before going live here. Uh, the Bears are re-signing offensive lineman Dieter Eichelin, uh per his agency. Uh, they sent out a tweet as well. Um, look, uh, center guard versatility. Got some snaps late in the year last year due to a uh, ton of injuries. I don't know if he's like a true backup. He's like a fringe 53-man roster guy. So, you know, he'll compete for a roster spot, uh, and we'll see what he does. Uh, you know, if they're re-signing him this early, clearly uh, – Flus and uh, Poles liked a little bit of what they saw. I think they do value the versatility there. Uh, he spent most of his time on the practice squad with the Bears, but maybe just maybe uh, he fights for a permanent 53-man spot in 2023. All right, that's going to do it for our Bears news and rumors segment here. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more episodes as we publish videos on a daily basis.